Hello, and welcome to The Entrepreneurial Musician from Hits Academy, a newsletter, coaching service, podcast, and blog preparing today's musicians for tomorrow's realities. Today's episode is titled, Don't Wait for a Seat at the Table. Thank you to Parker Mouthpieces for providing the hosting for TEM. Parker Mouthpieces offers fine, customizable component mouthpieces for horn, trombone, euphonium, and tuba, including the Andrew Hits Artist Model Tuba Mouthpiece. You can find out more at parkermouthpieces.com or follow them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, a quick plug for the newsletter, which I don't feel bad about plugging every week because because uh, I think there's a lot of value there. Um, last week's quartet of ideas was uh, issue number 33, and the most clicked on link out of the quartet was to a one-minute read from Seth Godin on playing the long game. Uh, it is a short and actionable reminder of why we all need to keep showing up and what happens when we do. Uh, thank you to everybody who uh, has just subscribed. They're slowly but surely rolling in. Uh, if you would like to see all of the previous issues and also see where you can uh, subscribe yourself, you can go to tem.fm slash newsletter. All right, TEM 306. Don't wait for a seat at the table. Uh, this is... Uh, was inspired by a quote from Shirley Chisholm, who was the first black woman uh, in Congress, and she was a force. You know you were a force, by the way, when the title of your autobiography is Unbought and Unbossed. That's, uh, that's awesome. Uh, the quote is, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Uh, this what a what a great lesson there right it's just the visual is perfect because in general at the table there's a certain number of seats and you got to wait to be invited and or you can just like pop your trunk open grab a folding metal chair and then just sit down uh, on the end of the table and you're there okay i have a cousin who runs his own photography business and uh, he's he's really good uh, he has been entering um, high-level photo competitions. I didn't even know that this world existed. It's, it's really wild. Uh, high-level photo competitions, and he keeps getting rejected. The criticism from these things is harsh, and uh, it's really blunt. I mean, you get like ratings. Like, uh, I mean, it, it doesn't actually say nothing redeemable here, but that's essentially what it is. I mean, it's really, really... And obviously, people sign up for it voluntarily, but it's really harsh. Uh, it's been brutal to watch from afar him getting all of these rejections, uh, and you can tell that it has taken a toll on him. It's very, very important for him uh, to do well in these things. Here's the thing. Uh, sometimes you need a seat at the table, and I'm, I'm, not, this is, I'm not offering him advice, by the way. This is just um, for myself and I bet for a lot of you uh, in the music business. Sometimes you need a seat at the table, uh, but more often than not, that is not the case. It just feels like you need a seat at the table. Uh, to use an example from our world, uh, although I'm not a part of this part of the music business any longer, uh, probably 95% of all tenure-track college teaching positions require a doctoral degree. Like, you can't even be considered for the position without one. Like, it could be uh, teaching guitar and uh, Jimmy Page, who uh, I am guessing is not Dr. Jimmy Page, or I probably would have heard that, literally could not even be considered to teach uh, rock guitar uh, without a doctorate, okay? Um, that is a very specific table, right? You have to have a doctoral degree, um, and you either have a seat at that table or you don't. Uh, but if I'm hiring a photographer, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for one examples of great photos that are similar to what I would want you to do for me. And two, social proof in the form of happy customers. And I'm not thinking like, I need social proof. But even though I teach this stuff all the time to TEM coaching clients, I am looking for people like me who had my needs, who are really happy that they went with this solution, whatever it may be. I could not possibly give less of a crap whether they are certified by some prestigious photography gatekeepers who there is a 99% chance I have never heard of. Now, I will say, I, I'm not saying it's worthless, by the way, because I will say that uh, winner of the blank photography award, even if I don't know what that is, will look nice on that website when I go there to learn more about you. But at what price? My cousin has dealt with serious doubts about their self-worth as a photographer, gotten really discouraged, uh, thought about like not taking photos any longer, 
uh, because they continue to not be chosen by the gatekeepers. This is someone who loves taking photos, is really good at it, has a business, and has thought about shutting the whole thing down because he has not been chosen. And while it's well, let me be clear that it again, it'll look nice on your website, but it is far less important to me than whether you have good examples of what you've already done and have you done them for people like me before. Like far less important. It's it's like an add-on. It's a nice like, oh, and also that cannot be the headline. I think it's a no-brainer that it's not worth it. Uh, if you are only doing it for business reasons, at least in his case, because of the toll that it is taking on him. By the way, there's no, uh, there's absolutely no risk that he's going to listen to this. He doesn't even know this podcast exists. Um, anyway, uh, here's why it is easy to get trapped in this cycle of needing to give, uh, you know, to be given a seat at the table. Lots of people on Facebook uh, who are uh, photographers keep on chiming in on my cousin's post with stories about how they were rejected for years and years and about how it almost broke them. And then they finally broke through. They freely share about how demoralizing it was to get harsh feedback and constant rejections. Problem is, the kind of people who seek gatekeeper approval for their art uh, at any cost tend to hang out with other people who do the same. So that worldview is never changed. It's only enforced. Um, it, so these people don't say, hey, is this worth it? They And by the way, the, there's a little bit of survivorship bias here as well because the people who did this for seven, eight, nine years who maybe would have commented on this thing if it was uh, five years ago and got so discouraged like he almost did that then stopped taking photos, they're not commenting on photography threads about like high-level competition, so they're not there. So the people who have gotten through running that gauntlet are the ones saying, you just got to keep doing it. And it's human to want others to value our work, and that includes wanting gatekeepers to value it, okay? But again, at what cost? And if you are hanging in circles who never even address that but at what cost question, then you just need to be careful. The other problem is that there have been blind studies that prove you will get better at taking photos by taking lots of photos rather than by taking the perfect photo, which these competitions are that you submit like a photo for a category. And it's not just like give us your body of work, which is not a reasonable way to run a competition anyway. I get it. Um, but there is, uh, there's a, there was a famous story of a pottery class in college, and uh, the class was split into uh, into two uh, equal parts, split in half. And um, the the class did not know this, by the way. This was a this was a, a blind study, uh, and the the people in class did not know that this was the assignment. They um, were, um, uh, uh, excuse me. I, uh, the, the people who judged, I just got confused. The, the students did know this. Half the class was told that they were going to be graded on how much pottery they made during the semester. That was literally it. If they made uh, X number of pounds of pottery, they would get one grade. If they got 2X, it would be a, a better grade. 3X would be a better grade, etc. The other half of the class was told that if uh, that they were going to be judged on just one piece of pottery, they had the entire semester to make one piece of pottery, and uh, they could just submit their best piece, and their grade would be based on how good that piece was. Now, this would not make any sense if they didn't know this. So they both knew the assignment. Now, they brought in uh, pottery experts who had no idea that this experiment was going on, and they then were shown pottery from both sides of the, the class. And um, overwhelmingly, the experts chose as the best pieces, pieces that came from the people who made lots and lots and lots of pottery and not from the people who kept starting and then, ah, uh, no, that's not quite right, and then started over again, and then started, and then started over again, started, got critical, tried it again, etc. It's just like, you got to take lots and lots and lots of photos, and eventually you're going to find your voice, you're going to get good at it. So don't wait for a seat at the table, or at the very least, question whether you need to be at the table in the first place. Not whether it would be nice or be validating to be at the table. That answer is almost always yes. Of course it is. 
but whether you actually need to be there to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Not my goals for you, not anybody else's goals for you, but your own goals. If the answer is no, how much could you accomplish if you took all of the time, resources, and emotional capital that you've been pouring into getting a seat at that table and put it towards the business side of your art or making more art or learning a new skill or taking a hike or rewatching The Sopranos or anything, right? I mean, all, all of it or falling in love. Um, and so uh, don't wait for a seat at the table. Like if they won't give you one, bring a folding chair. All right. Thank you to uh, Shirley Chisholm for uh, for that uh, really, really great uh, message. I needed to hear that this week. And uh, thank you for uh, for listening to TEM, for leaving a rating and a review, for subscribing, for being a Patreon patron, uh, for um, subscribing to the newsletter, uh, tem.fm slash newsletter. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. And that is going to do it for another episode of The Entrepreneurial Musician. <laughs> Thank you.